Steve Jew and MMA Mania. Hey, how are you? This is Phil Davis. Let's go ahead and knock it out, and uh, I'll be in touch with those guys in a minute. Sure, sure, that's fine. I got a whole list of things that came at me from King Mo the other day that I want to get into, but first, before I go to those, I want to get your thoughts on the passing of Jordan Parsons. Oh, man. You know, he trained at uh, trained out of the Lions in San Diego for uh, about a year and a half, maybe a year or so, before he went uh, down to uh, South Florida. So, good friends with him, and um, uh, he'll be uh, missed and remembered. It's very, very tragic. They still haven't found the driver who hit him. They're still looking. I know the Delray Beach Police Department put out some tweets of a silver Range Rover. They haven't found the car or the driver. So I, I really hope they do because this just sucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, it, it, uh, that's just no good all the way around. Yeah. And it changed this car in a big way. That mo- Just moments before I talked to you, they sent me a press release announcing two new fights for this car. They obviously had to shuffle things around a lot, but your fight has never changed. You've always been ready to fight King Mo on this card, so I gotta ask right at the start, why take the risk since you already have the title shot against Liam McGeary? Why put it on the line? Well, I guess you think this is a risk, and maybe I don't. I <laughs> guess we uh, fundamentally disagree. Well, I'm not saying that it is a risk from your point of view. I'm saying that to somebody listening to this or reading this on MMA Mania, they might think you're taking a risk. I mean, taking a risk and fighting a guy who, uh, you know, who's, who's top in the weight class. I mean, listen, this is what I do. Uh, I, I, I love to do it. It's, it's my fun. It's my passion. And it's also my job. And I'm ready to get in there with anybody. I do want that. I do want that Bellator belt. I'm, I'm going to get to that here shortly. But right now, why not go ahead and beat up King Mo? Sure. I understand that philosophy, but I think we've seen a lot of fighters in the past that have had a title shot and have just said, you know what, I'll just sit on the sidelines. So it's admirable that you're willing to go out there. Like you said, it is your job and what you love to do. But a lot of fighters in your position would just say, no, nah, I'm going to chill. I already got this in the bag. Yeah. No, thanks. I'll stay <laughs> active. Well, I got no problem with that, because after all, it's capping off what's going to be a really exciting card in San Jose at the SAP Center, so my hat's off to you for that. King Mo, he's always talkative, he's always got a lot of things to say, and one of the things he said about this fight was that maybe you're a little overconfident, and that a lot of his opponents seem to be that way until they feel his hands. Oh, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> oh, of course not. But what's what's your response to that? How do you take that that he's you know, saying you're cocky? Uh I don't think I'm I don't think I'm cocky. I definitely think I'm confident and I definitely know that he's capable of knocking somebody out. Uh do I think that person's leading? No. No, I don't think so. Not today. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's good, he's got hands. But, I mean, I, I thought the, the who's who of guys that have good hands. So, you know, I, I, you know, I've I read that scary story, and the good guy wins at the end. You have faced a murderer's row of guys with hands, and you've taken a lot of them down, and you've knocked a lot of them down, too. So it's not like mm-hmm. you have been there and done that before. But, you know, in his opinion, and again, I'm only going by what he told me in yesterday's interview, so I'm giving you a chance to respond to these things. He said... Well, I've faced wrestlers before in wrestler versus wrestler battles, and they're not going to humble me. They're not going to light me up. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> a guy who never wrestled a match in his life took him down in Bellator Dynamite 1. He's British for crying out loud. British. <laughs> and well, he didn't just take him down. He skied him. Yeah. But we can say the British do some catch-as-catch-can wrestling if they don't do, like, traditional American folk style or Greco-Roman style. No, I'm, no, I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> I'm going to say I would rather take the route of uh, Linton Vassal is, you know, he's a tough guy, and he learns, and he's willing to, you know, learn wrestling and grappling and everything else, and he's a... He's a, 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 a well-rounded fighter, but I'm not going to take the stance that as a whole, British people are good wrestlers. I'm not going to do that. He was indeed adaptable and proved himself versatile in the fight, but ultimately he didn't win the fight, so maybe that is a check mark in King Mo's favor. Mm, maybe it is. Only difference is when King Mo couldn't fight, Litton Vassal 
busted up eye, I mean, everything. He was ready to fight. I can't be the man to judge what an injury feels like. I mean, I know a busted up eye hurts, but I'm sure a bruised rib hurts really bad too. Oh, no, 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 no doubt about it. A bruised rib or broken rib, whatever the case may be, it hurts. I'm not trying to say, well, you know, oh, he, he wasn't hurt. No, he was hurt. But I also know Litton Vassal got beat up, and he was ready to rock. I won't dispute that one bit. So do you find that there's maybe poetic justice then, that this should have happened at Dynamite, and it's going to finally happen now in San Jose? Uh, Definitely. You know, it's definitely the fight that should have happened, and it didn't happen, so... I'm glad I'm happy. I'm glad it's happening next weekend. And it's the money fight. It's the one that fans are paying to see because, you know, like I said, this whole card has just been thrown up and down with all sorts of unexpected things. Josh Thompson withdrew the unfortunate accident to Jordan Parsons. So this is the money fight. It's all on you guys right now. Yep. 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 Although they did add, like I said earlier, they added a couple of interesting fights. Sergey Karatanov is going to make his Bellator debut. What do you think about that being the new co-main event? Oh, man. Man, it's almost too good. I'm going to be watching that fight in the locker room. I got to get warmed up, and I gotta, I'm got i going to watch that. You know, I, you know, the, a lot of times, I'm, I'm, I'm as much of a fan of this sport as a lot of the people watching. And so when uh, when you hear a fight like that, man, I, I just want to – I'm going to be busy, but I also want to watch that fight. So while you're doing your warm-ups and getting your hands taped up and getting those four-ounce gloves on, you're going to be looking up at a monitor to see if Haritanov will knock somebody out in his Bellator debut. Mm-hmm. That does seem to be his forte. In 23 wins, he's only had one win that went to a decision. So he's either going to knock somebody out or submit him. He doesn't play. Uh, No. Games are one thing he doesn't play. Definitely. Well, you don't play games either, but... King Mo seems to think you might be playing games with the name Mr. Wonderful, and I know you and I have talked about that a little bit when I ran into you in St. Louis, but he seems to think you owe Paul Orndorff some royalties. Ah! Okay. Well, then, I owe Paul Orndorff <laughs> whatever he owes the people of his country or whatever whatever kingdom he is the king of. I guess just in his opinion, there can't be two Mr. Wonderfuls. There can only be the one that was uh, a star in the 80s and 90s and not the one that is today. He thinks that you don't deserve that name. Not, I'm not saying that that's what I say. I'm saying that's what he says. You know, I, you know, we might have to find Paul Lorendorf and have him, you know, knight me with the, the wonderful name just to put all the naysayers to rest. Well, it's funny you mention that because King Mo was coming up with all sorts of ideas about people he wanted to accompany him in his crown. Maybe not to knight him, but he was looking at people like wrestling stars like Rikishi and Harlem Heat that he thought were going to come out to the ring with him. And apparently all those plans fell through, so I don't know what he's going to do now. Oh, goodness. Do you think he should takes... That should be interesting. Yeah. Do you think he takes the pro wrestling a little too seriously then? Uh, maybe. Yes, maybe. But it is about being entertaining, not just fighting. And you're an entertaining guy, and so is he. That's that's part of the reason this is a money fight, because you guys both know how to entertain. Yes, sir. You know, this is an entertainment business, and I like to entertain with my, you know, with my hands. You know, I, I, I talk a lot, but I'm part Italian, so I talk with my hands. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you proved that in the finals of the Bellator tournament, because you came out and you showed Francis Carmont just what your hands can do. There we go. So do you have a prediction then with this fight? Are you going to do the same thing to King Mo, or do you think it's going the full distance? What do you What do you see? I'm just going to beat him up until he, t- until he decides to quit. And if, and if he doesn't quit, then what? Well, then he'll just be beat up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I can't say it better than that, so... I'm going to just go ahead and let you wrap it up here with any plugs, shout-outs, sponsors, teammates, whatever you want to say or thank at this time. I, I want to give you the floor. Absolutely. I want to say a uh, big thanks to all my sponsors. Um, uh, Black Heart Rum, uh, Oak Grove Technology, Affliction Clothing, uh, Monster Energy. Big thank you to all of you guys, and uh, see you guys in case soon. Absolutely. Hey, what about social media? I want to always get people a few more followers when they oh, listen. Absolutely, absolutely. If you're not already following me, please follow me 
at Phil Mr. Wonderful on Twitter, Phil Davis on Facebook, and uh, uh, at Phil MRW on Instagram. Somebody stole Phil Mr. Wonderful. Can you believe that <laughs> nonsense? But Phil MRW, uh, look me up, and uh, I'm there. All right. What about Snapchat and Tumblr? I know there's a few more out there. Maybe maybe you can get those too. Snapchat? No, I don't. I don't. I don't snap. That's fine. I don't either. So I just figured I'd mention it because I know there's a few more. And who knows? If you got haters out there trying to steal your name on Instagram, they might just be doing it on Snap as well. Well, you know what? Their wives can get upset at them. So listen, <laughs> I'm 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 good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You are indeed. You're very good, and that's why you're in the main event at Bellator 154 in San Jose. So, Mr. Wonderful, thank you so much for the time. I always appreciate talking to you. Thank you very much. All right. You have a great fight in San Jose. Will do. Take care now. Yep. Bye-bye.